He actually made it as good. It says here the Lord God put the man into the Garden of Eden, also the woman, and they were supposed to work the land. Work has always been good. It's always been a plan of God to have us to work. Work in and of itself, when you're working regular hours, is not evil. It's actually quite relaxing. We're meant to do it. You look at what Paul says. He says, for even when he was with you, he said, I give you this command, simple command, if you don't work, you don't eat. Back then, the church shared everything. Land, property, food, money, everything. They just brought it all inside the church in a big pot, and they used the money and the food, and they shared amongst each other. And Paul said, if you've got somebody in your church that says, I'm just not going to do anything, and I'm going to live off the church, then Paul says, well, if you don't work, you don't eat. Because God does want you to work. You know what? In heaven, I know God's going to want us to work. We're still going to have stuff, stuff to do. Unfortunately, in the Garden of Eden, we sin. And as a result of that, our works become very, very difficult. But that's not the way it started out in the first place. The Sabbath. Now that we know that work is actually good, the Sabbath is actually a command from God. And when you look at the Ten Commandments, that's usually where you find it. Keep the Sabbath whole, is what it says. I want to explore what that means because I think in today's day and age, we've completely forgotten. The first thing when you start talking about Sabbath, you get somebody who will say this. Paul says, For the law is powerless to do in that it was weakened by the sinful nature. God did by setting his own son, the likeness of sinful man, to be a sin offering, and so commanded sin in sinful man, in order that righteous law might be fully met in us. Who do not live according to the sinful nature, we're supposed to live according to the Spirit of God. Some people will tell you, but didn't the Sabbath come from the Old Testament? Isn't the Sabbath listed in the Old Testament? And if it is, does that mean it applies today? After all, Paul says, the laws, so to speak, he says, you don't have to follow those anymore, to a certain extent. And I wonder if people don't stop at this verse, and that's what they get of it. Don't follow any laws anymore. Look, it doesn't matter. You find it in the New Testament, follow it. If it's in the Old Testament, is that true? And the answer is no. Not even close. If you look at the different laws, and there's three of them. The first one is the ceremonial laws. And you look in the Old Testament, you find those. That's actually telling you, how do I approach a good, awesome, and amazing God? A God without any sin. I'm a sinner. I can't approach Him on my own. In the Old Testament, you had to go to the priest. The priest would offer sacrifices to God, and they would go to God on your behalf. That's how a sinful person got to God. Now, most people say, all those rules, the sacrificial system has been thrown out. That's not true. It's not been thrown out. It's been fulfilled through Jesus Christ. Jesus is our sacrificial lamb that goes to God and says, this is your pathway now to God. The mediator is still there. Now it's not the priest. Now it's God's own son, Jesus. That's your mediator. So did the laws disappear? Absolutely not. There's still a sacrifice, and there's still someone mediating for us. So it's not gone anywhere. The second one is the civil laws. That's how we relate to each other. How do we get along with each other? That's the second one. Those laws, most people say, are gone. Most people say, it's a different culture. Back then, people, women, were only allowed to keep their face veiled most of the time. And, and there's a whole bunch of different laws of the land, what you could eat and couldn't eat. And we don't follow those anymore because we're not in the same culture. Is that a fair comment? Fortunately, the answer is no. That's a dangerous comment to make if you don't back it up real quickly. Because if I say that and I go into the New Testament, I can say anything in the New Testament the same thing. But wait a minute, what Paul told me about God, was that not in a specific culture? Should I throw it all out then? I don't live in the same culture as Paul. Does that mean the entire Bible then, that was written over time, should also be thrown out? Very dangerous when you say it's culturally specific, a piece of Bible, and say, well, I'm going to toss it. There's another way to look at it. And this is the way that I think we should approach it. Civil laws. Do we follow them now today? No, we don't. Paul never even followed them. Paul said for circumcision. He said, I'm circumcised, Paul said, but I don't require anybody else to be circumcised around me. None of the Christians. So what was Paul getting at? Paul said this. What were the civil laws meant for? What was the whole purpose of a civil law? It was to teach each other how to love each other. Where in the New Testament does it say we can't love each other? Where in the New Testament does it say we should love each other? You go to the Sermon on the Mount and you find it. 
Actually, the fulfillment of the Old Testament law, the civil laws, is also found in the New Testament. It's called love. If you love each other, you follow all the civil laws. You, you follow the spirit of the law. What about the moral laws? Here's another one that people say, this one applies to everyone. It says, if you go to the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments, we should still follow those today. Again, we've got to be very careful. Do we follow them exactly as they were given in the Old Testament? And again, the answer is no. We have to look at the New Testament and find out how to fulfill it through Jesus. I'll give you some examples. Jesus says, Thou shalt not commit adultery from the Old Testament. In Matthew 5, Jesus comes along and says, If you look at a woman or a man lustfully in your heart, you've already committed adultery. God went one step further and said, What's the reason why I gave you the command not to commit adultery? Not to lust after people. If you look at Thou shalt not kill, there's another one. I never killed anyone. Does that mean I followed the command? Am I innocent from it? The answer is no. There are people at times that I actually hated, was angry with. I had confessed those sins. But God in Matthew chapter number 5 again says, what's the real reason not to kill people? You're not supposed to hate them. You're not supposed to be angry with people. Because in Hebrews it says, we're all created in the image of God and you can't hate what God's created. We've got to ask ourselves when we look at the Old Testament to the New, how is it fulfilled? How did Jesus fulfill the law? If you go into Matthew, he says, not one job, not one tittle of the law will pass ever. I came to fulfill the law, not to get rid of it. He also says, if you teach anyone to disobey the laws, then guess what's going to happen to you? He said, you're better to take a mob stone, wrap it around your neck, and, and toss yourself in the sea. All the laws, we've got to think about, how do we fulfill them? The Sabbath, definitely. Is it all about just taking a day off work? And the answer is no. It's not just all about that. There's a lot more to it. There are reasons why we're supposed to keep the Sabbath. One of them is given in scriptures in Deuteronomy. And it makes it very clear what it is. He says, remember that you were at one time slaves in Egypt. And the Lord your God brought you out with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. And pulled you out of slavery. Now, not much slavery. Mm -hmm. Not here in North America anyway. Parts of the world there are places where they still have slavery, but not here. But do we not have slavery in a way? When you think about it, who's your taskmaster? Who is it? Is it your boss? Maybe. Or is it more likely yourself? If you're a workaholic, your taskmaster is you. You're the one who sets your schedule. You're the one that has 15 million things on the go. You're the one who's decided that you should work crazy hours to get a whole bunch of things you don't want. All the things that we work for. Don't we work for a nice house? Don't we work for a nice car? Don't we work for more food in our bellies? Don't we work for some things that we don't need? Don't we want iPods and nice computers and all those gadgets that we can find? Doesn't the world tell us we should work hard for those? And when we do, do we not put ourselves into slavery? We do if we work insane hours, 24-7. We do have a taskmaster. That's us. That's not what God wants us to do. And I got to think of one day. I'm thinking, there's a lot of stuff in life that's free, isn't there? I got to think of, maybe so. I get looking at a stream. You ever sit beside a stream, a brook, and just listen to it gurgle over the Bronx? That's free. Does anybody charge you for that? <coughs> Absolutely not. You can go to lots of different places. Farmland, where people let you go across the farmland, sit by your brook. They don't really care if you want to go do that. Just fill your boots. That's free. What about a walk? You can go on, there's a whole bunch of national parks. There's a whole bunch of walks that you can go on with scenery that looks like that and far better than that. Are you charged for it? No. You pay for it in taxes, of course, but it is free. You don't get charged. Nobody's standing there asking you for money. What about the sunset? Who paid for that? Who in this world can't see the sun? Everyone can. doesn't matter what part of the world you're in, poor or rich, you can see the sunset. You can see it rise. And finally, what about the nighttime? The starry star out. You can look up in the night anytime you feel like. Nobody's going to charge you for that. That's free. I think the best things in life are those things created by God. I think it's the things that He's given us that are free, that we take for granted, that we should enjoy. Instead of chasing after iPods and fancy computers that people give you viruses for, make your life a little bit painful. 
instead of seeking uh, cars and nice boats and all that stuff. You can chase after a lot of different things, but you could also stop and take some time off and enjoy the things that are fun.